Hey everyone, this is having you wear elastics, or maybe you're just trying to get prepared for this whole braces journey and are wondering, what the heck are these elastics for? Well, in today's video, we're going to review the seven most common types of elastics your orthodontist might ask you to wear, as well as the reasons why you're going to have to wear these elastics. So let's go. What's up guys, Dr. Greg here back with another episode of Braces Explained. I hope you guys have all been doing awesome and had a great week. Thank you for you guys and your support and everything you guys do on this channel and us on the Braces Club. I, I love all of you guys and I appreciate all you guys' support. Let's get started with today's video. I'm going to put the links out in this corner so you can jump ahead wherever you want in the video to whatever elastic pattern you might be wearing. But let's get started with what elastics are and why they're used in orthodontics. So I've talked about this in an old long time ago video, but elastics are used to basically make it so that your upper and lower teeth fit together. Your orthodontists can do a great job at lining up the upper teeth as well as the lower teeth but in order to get that bite to fit perfectly for you you have to help us out a little bit and that's where elastics come in and what elastics do is they attach your upper teeth to your lower teeth in some pattern to either you know bring your lower teeth forward lower teeth back upper teeth forward upper teeth back bring them together separate them something like that so they're used for a bunch of different reasons and we're going to review some of those in today's video but before we review them i want you guys to go down and give this video a thumbs up as well as hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet already also, if you guys haven't downloaded the ebook yet, Life with Braces, I'm going to put a link in this corner as well as in the description of today's video. But it's an awesome ebook for anyone who's thinking about getting started with treatment or if you're going through treatment, it gives you some tips and tricks on how to make your process and journey more smooth. And it's a free perk of our Patreon membership. So go ahead and check that out if you haven't already. So the real key with these elastics is that you have to be very consistent and wear them the way your orthodontist says. Because if you're inconsistent with your elastic wear, it's kind of like pushing a ball halfway up a hill. You go push the ball halfway up and it took a lot of effort to get the ball up the hill, but if it's not quite there, the ball's gonna roll down and you're gonna lose all the progress that your orthodontist prescribed for you to get. So my plea to you guys is if you've been told to wear elastics, please wear your elastics. And if you're told right now to be wearing elastics and you're not wearing them, pause this video, go get your elastics and put them on in, okay? And like all the elastic patterns that I'm gonna discuss in today's video, you might have to wear certain elastics or might not have to wear certain elastics, really depending on your case. So please take all this with a grain of salt. It's more so to explain why you're wearing something if you have it, as opposed to telling you that you should have something, okay? Your orthodontist knows your case best, so please trust what he or she says, because like I said, they know your case best and they're doing what's best for you. But the first elastic pattern I wanna talk about in today's video is what is called class one triangles or triangle elastics. And what these elastics look like is that they're attached from your canine on the top to your canine and your first premolar on the bottom. And this can be used for a few different reasons. One of the main reasons is to bring your upper and lower teeth closer together to achieve an appropriate bite. This can also be used as if you have a little bit of an anterior open bite where your front teeth don't touch all the way when you bite down. Well, these elastics can be used to pull the upper teeth down and the lower teeth up so that you can achieve that proper bite. And in certain cases, if we're trying to like close space or do something like that, well, if we wanna maintain the bite in the back, a lot of the times your orthodontist might have you wear these triangles to basically hold the bite together as we're trying to achieve other movements, okay? Another variant of this that I personally like to use quite a bit is what I like to call reverse class one triangles. So that's basically attaching the canine and the first premolar on the top to the first premolar on the bottom. So it's, it's basically like the triangle that you saw in the animation, but just flipped upside down. And it serves a very similar purpose, but in certain cases, it's more advantageous to use, especially if you're trying to get the back teeth to fit together a little bit better. And while we're on the topic of, you know, anterior open bite, where your upper and lower teeth don't touch in the front, there's also a really common elastic pattern that's called an anterior box. And what an anterior box does is that we actually add these little wire hooks on the front teeth to make it so that you can attach elastic. So these little hooks are called Kobayashi ties and I can actually talk about them in another video if it's something you're interested in. So let me know down below if that is something you wanna know more about. Because traditionally, you know, these front teeth don't have those little hooks on them. So to wear this anterior box, your orthodontist will tie in these Kobayashi hooks and the anterior box elastics will be used to basically attach your upper and lower teeth in the front to bring your upper teeth down, lower teeth up, or a combination of these two to achieve that appropriate overbite and overjet where your upper teeth go in front of and over your lower teeth a little bit. Okay, so let's move on to elastic pattern number three, which arguably is the most common elastic pattern. That's called class two elastics, okay? So what class two elastics means is that you're trying to correct a class two bite. And a class two bite is when your upper teeth are ahead of your lower teeth, okay? Or your lower teeth are too far back compared to your upper teeth a combination of basically having a larger overjet. And the way these elastics work is that they attach your upper canines to your lower molars. And as the elastic wants to return to its original shape, it'll pull the upper teeth backwards as well as push the lower teeth forward in order to resolve that overjet and get it so you have an appropriate bite. So this is used to fix minor 
overbites, what a lot of people call overbites, which are more appropriately called overjets, where the upper teeth are ahead of the lower. On the flip side, elastic pattern number four is if you have to wear class three elastics. Now, class three elastics are to fix a class three bite, where your lower teeth are ahead of your upper teeth or vice versa, your upper teeth are behind your lower teeth. So this is in the case of like a mild underbite. If you have this scenario, your orthodontist might have you wear what's called class three elastics, which attach from your upper molars to your lower canines. What this will do effectively is pull those lower teeth back as well as push the upper teeth forward in order to achieve a positive overbite and positive overjet. So your upper teeth are in front of and over your lower teeth. So like the class twos are used for an overbite, class three elastics are used for an underbite. And you might be thinking, oh my God, there can't be any more. There's more. So the next two I'm gonna talk about is a variant of those class two and class three elastics. So these are kind of like a hybrid of the first one I talked about and the third and fourth one I talked about. So these are class two triangles and class three triangles, okay? And these class two and class three elastics are a little bit different than what my patients wear. I have them wear class two and class three triangles a little bit differently but effectively what it is is the same thing. So what we're trying to do with these class two triangles is effectively we're trying to fix an overbite as well as bring the upper and lower teeth closer together. So this could be used in a case where you might have a little bit of an open bite as well as a class two bite where your upper teeth are ahead of or your lower teeth are behind the upper teeth, right? So these class two triangles will bring the upper teeth down and back as well as the lower teeth up and forward to achieve an appropriate bite. And on that note, let's talk about those class three triangles, which are basically gonna do the exact opposite. They're gonna bring your upper and lower teeth closer together as well as bring those lower teeth back as well as the upper teeth forward to achieve an appropriate bite and couple. And you guys must be thinking this has to be it. What other elastic patterns are there? And there's more. So the last one I really wanna talk about is what's called cross elastics. And this is if your midline is a little bit off and your arches aren't completely fitting together properly. Well, cross elastics can be used from an upper canine to a lower canine in order to fix your midlines a little bit. A lot of the times, the reasons why you have midlines that aren't on are because actually a couple of reasons. And I actually will make a whole video talking about midlines if you guys are interested in that. So let me know in the comments. But if it's a minor midline discrepancy, well, these cross elastics can be used from an upper canine to a lower canine to basically coordinate the bite and get it so your midlines are more on. Like I said, there's a bunch of different reasons why your midlines might not be on, and I will dive into it in another video, maybe in like the next one or two videos. But this elastic pattern is used to correct that slight midline asymmetry, okay? There are more elastic patterns, but they aren't super duper common. You know, I've seen some trends on TikTok where people are wearing those seating elastics where it kind of like zigzags in the back. Um, those are really common too, and there's no animation for that. So I guess you could call that like a bonus eighth elastic pattern. But what these zigzag seating elastics do is that they pull your upper and lower teeth closer together to basically finalize your bite, okay? So those are basically used in specific cases if you just have to finish off the bite those seating elastics might be used. But the elastics that we talked about in today's video cover almost all the elastics that your orthodontist will have you wear. Will there be types that weren't covered in today's video? Absolutely. And will you have a certain type of bite that your orthodontist doesn't have you wear these elastics for? Sure. These are very, very case dependent. And the person that knows your case best is you as well as your orthodontist. So please be sure to have an open dialogue with him and her so that you know what's best for your specific case, okay? And I'm curious, what elastic patterns are you guys wearing right now? Let me know down in the comments of today's video. And while you're down there, be sure to give this video a thumbs up as well as hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet. That's all I have for you guys today. And I will catch you guys next week on another episode of Braces Explained. But for now, Dr. Greg out.